All right, so we're back here with another one, and this is a video that I've kind of wanted to make actually since summer, which is when I recently did this model. I did a uh, brief review of one of these many, many years ago. It was still when I was uh, running on carpet back before I even had a layout. Um, but what it is, is it's a MTH uh, dealer appreciation unit, which came in a slightly different box, as you can kind of see here. I'll zoom out so you can see it. So a little bit different than their normal uh, black and orange boxes. And apparently this was, the K4 was one of the very first HO scales that um, MTH ever did. I believe it was actually their first HO locomotive that they did. And uh, the history around this engine is a little bit foggy. Um, some people will claim that uh, Pennsylvania never actually had a Tuscan K4. And there's others that claim that it was real, unfortunately. Uh, most of the people who would have had firsthand um, witnessing of it are either passed away, uh, there wasn't any color photos at the time, and uh, there wasn't internet. So. The information's a little bit uh, foggy on whether this is actually real or not. Um, whether it's real or not, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, if it's a fantasy scheme, I'm okay with that. I think it's really cool um, whenever there's a steam engine that just isn't black. It's something that's a little bit different. So, cause some of the pieces that I used on this, and the reason that I kind of redid it, um, the original unit that I picked up was one that was actually not for me, it was actually for a friend. And um, after looking over it, and then I kind of wanted one for myself, um, it took probably about two years of hunting on the internet to finally get one of these, but I finally found one. Sorry, camera died there, so moving on here. Some of the reasons that I'm bringing this out now is uh, over the summer I made an improvement on it. Um, I tried to update the proto sound that was on it and ended up blowing up the decoder. And uh, it cost a pretty penny to send these back to MTH to get repaired. And now that MTH has kind of announced that they're going out of business, I didn't want to run the risk of sending out a model and, you know, potentially not getting it back or just not getting it fixed. And also it costs a lot of money. So I decided that I would make the leap um, in spite of losing the smoke and go ahead and upgrade this to ESU-5, uh, which I've never at the time had put ESU-5 into any steam locomotive. Uh, their steam sounds are a little bit different than what was in 4.0. Uh, they're better. Uh, this is what they call a high res file. And uh, the decoder that I used in it was just a regular... Um, I believe it was an 8-pin decoder that was in there. Uh, you don't really need too many functions on this just because there's not that many auxiliary lighting features. And also I wanted to try out these new TCS 28mm high bass speakers, uh, which were a tremendous success in this engine. Uh, they're a little bit too thick to be using in diesels, but for most steam locomotives, you have a big tender to work with. Um, there's not a big tender in this one. It's a relatively short tender, uh, even for an HO scale model. So there was enough room to put it in there and get everything to fit in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and start it up here. I'm just going to turn on my remote. And we'll want to select 5409. Okay, we got 5409. Hmm, not working here. There we go. Got it running now. I realized I actually had my track power unhooked since I need to unhook it to run some things on regular DC this morning, which is unusual, but I had to do some testing. Anyways, um, I did have to replace the little tiny headlight there, um, which is a little bit brighter now.
And I went ahead and fired it up here. We'll hit the bell. Now, while this is an ESU5 file, the horn, well, not the horn, but the whistle is actually pulled from the sound selection set, um, which is an add-on that you can download to your lock program or software. And in there, it has a number of air whistles in there from steam locomotives, and the Pennsylvania one is actually quite good. Um, this is probably my favorite version other than that that's in the QSI, which I've used in some previous models, but QSI is a very old decoder, doesn't have all the features that this does. Um, this is kind of my new favorite for Pennsylvania locomotives, so let's take a listen here. This is awesome. Love that horn. And we'll go ahead and back it up here for a second. You don't get a sense of it on camera, but those chuffs are so loud and so clear. When this engine's rolling by, you can actually feel it vibrating through the wood itself. It feels amazing. And it's so smooth. And while it's very loud, it's also very clear. There's no distortion whatsoever. So that's it for that. Um, not a real big deal. I'm not going to re-review the whole entire engine, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of how amazing ESU-5 really is, especially for steam. Um, this is my plan on what I put into uh, what I'm going to put into my uh, BLI Challenger, uh, which is kind of sitting over on the other table. You may have seen it kind of sitting there in some recent uh, videos. Just as you saw this one sitting kind of on the table for a lot of videos recently as well. Uh, but that BLI Challenger, I plan on putting this ESU-5 in. And they have a really good UP whistle, so I think that's going to turn out fantastic. 
Um, I'm hoping that it also can be finally the video that a lot of people have been waiting for where I show how to do the smoke retention on a BLI in conjunction with an aftermarket decoder. Um, and it should work out perfectly just because the uh, it did have a recent decoder failure on that 3977. Um, the motor function doesn't seem to be working anymore. Um, but everything else seems to still work, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, also, I tried shooting the first part of this video on the neighbor's camera, which is a Sony. And this is the one that's set up for vlogging. Which, I'm um, trying to learn how to use this. If I uh, see that there's a definite benefit of it, I may decide to pick one of these up for myself. Uh, about the first two minutes or so of the video was shot on that. So if it looks a little different in that first part, that's why. Um, ran out of batteries. So I, I wanted to film the whole video on it, but ran out of batteries. So that's it for this one. And I hope it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with ESU-5 as far as steam. Um, there's a lot of different whistles that they have on there. They're not going to have everything that's out there. Uh, but this is definitely a huge jump up over the ESU 4.0, which 4.0 really wasn't a lot different than 3.5. Uh, this looks, sounds, and feels a lot more like a TCS steam decoder, which in this day and age is really the best sounding steam decoders out there. Um, nice thing about ESU is it does give you the ability to use the lock program or you're not stuck at using those uh, voice menus that TCS has. You can actually use CVs on this or you can use the lock program or software. And also you have your choice of whistles that you can choose from just as you can on TCS. Um, really depends on your application. Uh, for Pennsylvania Railroad, I think this is pretty good. Um, so I plan on putting this same sound set into some of my other Pensy Locos, and I'll probably do videos on those as well. So, hope you enjoyed this engine. Um, it, I don't know that video really does it justice at how well this engine sounds. This, this is probably the best sounding steam locomotive that I have. Um, it just blows you away in person if you hear it. So, that's it for this one, guys.